Hello everyone, welcome to Xscale's webinar series on the principles of Agile organization. This is our first session. My name is Peter Merrill. A lot of my clients these days are interested in taking Agile to places it hasn't been before. And we have a whole bunch of people talking about large scale Agile, business agility. What are these things? In Xscale, there are six fundamental principles that you can't do without if you're going to be an Agile organization. So we're going to deal with them one at a time, and that's pretty easy because Xscale itself is an acronym for these principles. The X stands for Exponential Return on Investment. Now, that's a wonderful aspiration, and if you are a startup, it's essential to attracting investment. No one is going to invest in a risky proposition without this kind of idea in the PowerPoint. Any startup would be delighted with a single one of these hockey sticks. The real question is, if you are uh, a going concern, a small to medium or even large corporation, is exponential growth something that's possible for you? Uh, on the other hand, in a time of peak disruption, if you're trying to do slow and steady wins the race, there aren't too many examples of businesses that have been able to carry on like that for very long. There's an American initiative that comes out of Google and DARPA called Singularity University. They have the idea that exponential growth is now the norm that all organizations should be targeting. They say you should be expecting to grow a billion dollar business in about nine months. The example they like to use is Kodak, which invented the first digital camera in 1975. They patented them, sat on the patents and wouldn't let go of the idea that cameras had to be linked to a chemical film business. Eventually the cameras became quite practical. One, two, four megapixels, maybe no more than half a second between pressing the button and hearing the click. Meanwhile, Kodak focused their efforts on chemical cameras. In 2012, the point of disruption came and Kodak filed for bankruptcy. These devices started getting built into phones and the competition narrowed to the phone manufacturers that were able to compete. These days, most phones have cameras that are perfectly adequate and people will not pay you very much more money or possibly any more money for a phone that has more megapixels. Once money leaves the equation, a bunch of people start building services that simply assume that these devices are ubiquitous. Snapchat, Instagram, these companies made billions on the proposition that everybody has a digital camera in their pocket. So that's a lovely proposition for exponential growth, but it's not exponential growth of a business. It's exponential growth of a market. What's the difference? There's a bloke named Kano who came up with this. Um, Kano's idea was if we were to graph the customer satisfaction versus the investment required to achieve that satisfaction, we see different behaviors for different kinds of products. There's some like um, a milk carton. If your milk carton doesn't keep the milk in, it's not satisfying basic expectations, you won't sell many of them. If you clad it in lead and keep the gamma rays out, you're not gonna sell any more of them. On the other hand, if we think about the early days of um, digital cameras, just small incremental improvements in the shutter speed or the number of megapixels or the color quality were enormously delightful and would sell you huge numbers of devices. Well, Kano's insight was that over time, all delighters become basic expectations. And that makes a bit of a mockery of the Singularity University exponential curve. If we plot its states, obviously, you've still got all the disruption working exponentially, that's great. But once things dematerialize, you're only getting linear growth in the return on your investment. Once the money goes out of the equation, now you have to provide an adequate quality digital camera in your mobile phone or you won't sell your mobile phone. Then there is a new growth curve. And if you aren't already on it, then you are already behind the eight ball. So that means that these curves look more like sigmoids, S curves. You're always going to hit some sort of constraint, whether it's in the market or in the technology or in your, uh, the behavior of your own company. So the question is always, how do we bake the next curve into our activities? 
But even if you plan it in, if you were to string your sigmoid curves together one after another like this, well, you're only going to achieve linear growth. Apple had a different idea. Stack the curves, one on top of another. You're going to get exponential growth in a mature organization. This strategy, which we're calling extropy, is the only way we're going to do it. Apple have not stopped growing just because Steve Jobs passed away. But they have changed their behavior. It's true, they've doubled and redoubled in size since Jobs died. Their market cap is, is, is really worth more than the country of Russia. But this is the only new product that Apple have released under Cook. So it begs a question. If Jobs was still alive and wanted to keep on stacking sigmoids, how would he go about it? I think we've got a concrete answer to what Jobs would have done. This is something that builds on existing Microsoft technology. It's an augmented reality visor. It's got a connect built into it. Let's take our experience off the wall and then put it on the table over here. Create world. That is the sound of a delighter. As I run around and play, Sax can easily navigate and manip manipulate the world using his voice and his hands. He can walk around the hologram, pan around for different viewpoints, and even look inside. Microsoft bought Minecraft to generate an augmented reality experience that no one else can match. Jobs would have called it iReality, but that wasn't to be. This is Google Trends' picture of Apple today. It looks pretty disheartening until you realize the scale. It's not like Apple's about to go broke. iPhone sales continue linearly, and even though revenues have dropped, iPhones have at least one more generation before augmented reality obsoletes them forever. Extra people doesn't mean you magically morph into Steve Jobs. But if we don't have the intent, we can't realize it. Extropy isn't just about products. It's something an agile organization has to apply every day. At a per epic level, at a per feature level, that's very different to what we usually do in product management. This idea of leapfrogging, stacking the sigmoids, requires agility, and more agility than just agile delivery teams. It requires simple design, continuous optimization, autonomous teams, triple loop learning, and ecosystems thinking. In the next part of our webinar series on the principles of agile organization, we're going to look very carefully at design. Not just design thinking, but designing for simplicity, what Frank Lloyd Wright called form and function as one. If you'd like to investigate these ideas further, try xscalealliance.org. We look forward to seeing you next time.